This morning's guest is making dollars and cents out of our local economy. Who is he? You'll meet him coming up next on Carolina People. Happy Thanksgiving and good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the conference center on the Grand Strand campus of Ori Georgetown Technical College. We're focused on the local economy and we're visiting with a research economist with the bb and Center for Economic and Community Development, Don Shunk. That's right. Good morning, Don. It is Shunk. That's right. S C H U N K. That's exactly right. Yeah, a lot of folks have problems with Do that. Do you ever go yeah. by Donald or is it Don? Don is good. Don, Don is, is good. Great. great. Yeah. Thanks for coming in on Thanksgiving morning. Yeah, it's morning. a pleasure to be here. Thank Surprise, you. A surprise that Ori George Sound Tech actually let us in here. Yeah, on Thanksgiving. To yeah. film today. That's I'm sure right. you've got That's a crazy right. morning. Get ready. What are your plans today? Well, you know, it's all the usual stuff. Uh, we've, we've got the, the full meal going. Uh, the, the turkey will be getting in pretty soon. I'm, I'm probably in charge of that. I Are you think. the big the big cheese uh, I'm there usually uh, in yeah. charge of the turkey. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. I've got uh my wife and, and our four kids are going to be enjoying the day, and my parents are going to be coming over. They've uh, they, they live here along the coast. Your parents live uh, down here. They, they do in the winter. That's right. They, Great. Uh, they're in Minnesota half the year, and they're they're down in uh, Garden City half the year. That's so fantastic. They're going to be coming over, and uh, we'll do our usual uh, sort of our tradition is to do the full full menu, and then take the kids out for a movie later. That's later on great, today. absolutely. Yeah. That's our Christmas tradition. I'm glad right? you all do that on Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. Right. Try to beat the crowds. Did you say you got four kids? We do. We do. Wow. Yeah. Well, y'all have four kids. Right. That's all fantastic. under un under ten years old. Golly, yeah. you are busy. How do you have time to be a research economist? Well, you know, th there's not much uh, spare time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, between uh, doing doing the work I do, doing the research, and, and going out and, and giving uh, talks to various kinds of community groups around right. the state. Yeah. Uh, you know, spend a lot of time driving, yeah. uh, burn up a lot of miles, and get home and spend time with the family. Uh, th there's not much left over. <laughs> and you actually travel the state, you said. I mean, you travel around on behalf of the BBT Center for... Yeah. Uh, Economic and community development—that's a big. Uh, it it a is. Big, it uh, is big. I know. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Actually, I mean, that, that's really a huge part of sort of what I do and, and why Coastal decided to, to form this research economist position within the center. There, this is a new position. I'm, I'm the oh, first okay. Great. one Good. to have that. Just position. joined I, here. This I started year. about a year ago in, in right. January. Right. Um, and, and and really a major piece, sort of the, you know the major uh, line in the job description is to serve as as a sort of a liaison between what's going on at Coastal in the business school in particular and right. with the broader business community and, and you know, various kinds of community groups locally but also uh, also statewide. That's fantastic. Yeah. And the reception's been good when you travel around. It's not doom and gloom. Well, You're well, that's pretty right. uh, upbeat about... Uh, yeah, I, I tend to be pretty optimistic. Uh, you know, I, I've been in the state eight eight to nine years working right. at the uh, University of South Carolina for, for quite a while. Um, so, you know, I, I know a lot of folks around Columbia and, and throughout the upstate and, and into the Aiken area. And, and uh, you know, I, I moved from Columbia to Myrtle Beach, but, uh, you know, it turns out they, they figured out how to get a hold of me. So I spent uh, the last few months, uh, I've, I've been probably about two times a week driving around, giving, you know, everyone wants to know what the economy looks like next year. I mean, th yeah. this is the perfect time of year for, yeah. for industry groups and community groups, rotary clubs, whatever the case is, to get right. together and sort of look at, you know, sort of like we're going to talk about today, right. what's coming down the road in terms of the economy. Everyone yeah. wants to know that in the fall. <laughs> so it's a... It's always a busy time of year. You're feeling good, Don, about well, uh, 2008. You know, I know I, as you I, said, you're normally optimistic. Right. Has there been a time in life where you were pessimistic? Well, you know, there, there was when I first, you know, I, I came through the system. I got my PhD and got my first job doing this kind of stuff at, at a very unusual time. It was in I got my PhD in 1999 mm -hmm. uh, from from Tennessee. And I, I took the job at, at the University of South Carolina in the Moore School of Business uh, right. in the summer of 1999. Right. So I came in and, and you know, fresh out of graduate school, uh, you know, sort of taking over the forecasting duties, trying to track the economy, try to you know, figure out what's, what's coming over the next few months and next few sure. quarters sure. at a time when, you know, if you think back to 1999, uh, early 2000, we had an economy that was booming. We had a stock market that yeah. was booming. And then very quickly, 
things started to drop. We had a, the, the burst of a, a, a bubble in the stock market, in, in NASDAQ in particular. Uh, we started sliding into a recession pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So I was really sort of thrown in to the fire. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I came out and was, was you know, my, my first job at economic forecasting and doing this kind of work was at a time when things were deteriorating pretty mm -hmm. quickly. So, uh, so, you know, it was a good introduction, I, I think, right. for me to, to sort of the, the realities of, you know, going from being a grad student you know, working on a PhD, right. you know, right. sitting, writing a dissertation, doing all that kind of stuff, and then getting out in the real world sure. and seeing, you know, sort of what, what's really going on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, since that time, I, you know, I feel like I have, you know, have developed, you know, a bit of a sense of, you know, when things are looking really bad right. for the economy. Right. And, and when things, you know, I, I think we're in a period right now, locally, statewide, whatever you want to talk about, where, um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty around the economy. Housing market is looking rough, and all of those kinds mm -hmm. of things. But generally speaking, we have a pretty strong economy, pretty mm -hmm. resilient mm -hmm. economy that keeps bouncing back. So even coming out of your uh, doctorate there at uh, University of Tennessee, mm -hmm. you were you were still you were even though we were hitting a tough time, you were optimistic. Uh, I was still, still going to come out of that. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's this right. This is your nature, which is great. I'm not trying to that's, take anything away right. from exactly. Yeah, that, that is my nature. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's clearly is my nature, and, right. and you, know, you know, the folks around the state that that have sort of been, um, you know, getting used to right. you know, over the last eight years to seeing me give presentations or whatever sure. on the economic outlook. I think I've sort of built up that reputation. Of, yeah. You know, a lot of times economists uh, are, are can be a, a fairly dismal lot. Well, and the economics dismal is the dismal sure, science. Of course. Yeah. You know, we yeah. talk about. Uh, you know, economists love to talk about how rough things are right. and so yeah. on. Uh, but, but you know, I'm, part of my nature is to sort of you know find those those bright spots out there, those yeah. reasons to be optimistic for what's. I mean, you want to be realistic, yes, of course. But it's possible to be a little optimistic. Yes, too. I think being optimistic can hopefully help uplift things uh, right. even to a degree. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Very important. Do you miss Minnesota at all? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, for the, the first few years right. when we were out of Minnesota, we missed it. Yeah. Um, and and we'd we'd go back, uh, spend a couple weeks there at, at Christmas, yeah. you know, to get the snow and to get the cold and all of that, <laughs> you know. So so we were in Tennessee, then we moved to Columbia, now moving to Myrtle Beach. Yeah. You can see the trend, right? That's we're right. getting farther That's and right. farther away, getting warmer and warmer. Oh yeah. Uh, so so we, uh, I mean, we we miss the family. My wife and I are both from Minnesota. The yeah. family generally is, is still that. in Minnesota. That's right. Minnesota. Uh, but we we don't miss the weather. <laughs> is your wife an economist as well? Is no, she? no, she's right. not. She uh, she. She has a degree, uh, a bachelor's degree in applied psychology from uh, the school that we both went to in northern Minnesota right. for our undergraduate degrees. Uh, but right now, her, she, she's, she's, she's got working four, now. You all have four kids. children. That's, that's right. right. You said three, five, eight, and ten. Yeah, that's right. Boy, girl, girl, and boy. That's, that's right. amazing. It's, it's exciting times right that now. Is, now. That is. That is. Sure. Absolutely. And today's a big day again. Thanks yeah, for getting right. out, that's to breaking right. out for a little bit. You know, yeah. of course, when you think about how do you go about compiling things, let's say for a region, of course, you know, most of our viewers are in the PD and southeastern North Carolina, but let's say just focusing down on this area, the Ori Georgetown area. I know obviously traveling the state and you're very interested in the entire South Carolina economy, right, right. but let's say focusing on this area, how do you go about compiling information or how does the bb and Center there for a community uh, Center for Economic and right. Community Development get all of its uh, materials together. Well, I, I mean, the, the first thing you need to do is sit down and sort of think about, I mean, what, what is it that we, myself and the center, what, what are we interested in? We're interested in trying to understand ourselves and help people understand right. what, what drives our local economy. You know, what, what determines, you know, how, uh, how many job opportunities there's going to be locally. What determines what kind of wages those workers can see. What right. determines, you know, the likelihood that you're going to be able to sell a house along mm -hmm. the Grand Strand. You know, right. sort of, you know, sort of what, what drives local economic development and economic growth in the Myrtle Beach area. Mm -hmm. So then you step back and you say, well, you know, we know some, some things about this area. In particular, we know tourism is a huge driver. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we all talk about tourism so much, but it's for good reason. Uh, when you look at, at the makeup of our economy, what dictates our economy, our econ economic performance, especially over sort of a short short period of time, it swings in tourism. It swings wow. in uh, what's happening with uh, you know gas prices and how that influences people's travel plans and right. how much they spend once they get here and all of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. so, so for this economy, and it's very different from when you know Columbia, or if you live in Greenville, trying to figure out the Greenville economy. It's very different. Right. And here, markedly it's, different. That's yes. right. Here, you, you look at tourism. You try to figure out, 
you know, uh, how many folks locally are, are working in tourism-related jobs, mm -hmm. uh, how many businesses are, are, you know, there because of tourism, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how much are people spending when they vacation here, and, and so you really sort of focus on that. Now, I'm not, I'm not a tourism Economist, I'm not a, I'm not an expert in tourism. Right, right. Um, you know, I'm I'm here because I, you know I think I have an understanding of sort of, you know, what drives local economies mm -hmm. and what sort of determines you know more broadly economic conditions. Right. Here, largely it's tourism. Mm -hmm. Even for folks who obviously we think in the newspaper business, you know, we're not dependent on tourism, well, but of course we are. You are. That's we right. are. We're that's dependent right. on people. Uh, the tourism continuing to maintain jobs in the area, right. so that. Business can afford to uh, to advertise to bring people in so that mm -hmm. they can actually uh, folks have to have jobs to be able to have enough money right. to come in and support the businesses. So and, and and then there's also this tremendous link between tourism and and population growth. Right. Uh, and and you know taken to get I mean you look at us for example we were right. living in Colombia for seven eight years. Right. Um, you know the opportunity came to consider moving to the beach and you start looking around at all of the amenities that are here, oh, yeah. all, all of the, you know, the full range of, you know, not just tourism, you know, right. restaurants and hotels and attractions, but the full range of other businesses that have sprouted up along the coast here, um, you know, relatively recently. Uh, so, you know, we have an area that's driven by tourism, but right. that feeds into to non-tourism oh, and yeah. other kinds of service right. sectors, really? and that makes it an attractive area for, right. for population growth. Absolutely. Great point. Real estate right. being one of those well, principal drivers for so long. The that's tourism, right. uh, maybe not, but surely the people coming down here to find they love the area mm -hmm. and then making it their second home or even their primary residence. Well, that's right. That's right. And, and it really just sort of keeps feeding off of each other. I mean, mm -hmm. when, when you have an area like, like Myrtle Beach and you know, all the way down the coast, right. down, all the way down to Hilton Head, you know, when you have an area that's sort of you know, based largely on tourism, maybe starts off as a tourist destination, but it really can develop and grow into something beyond just sure. that. You know, a real attraction, not just for, for you know, tourism-related industries, but also, you know, I think we're, we're, we're at the leading edge of seeing mm -hmm. the Grand Strand sort of diversify and develop into uh, something that it has never been, you know, which is a, a much more diversified economy. And obviously your position, you highlight something that had never been, the BB&T Center recognizing they needed a local research economist, someone right. who could really get into the community. That's a great testament to, to Coastal Federal formerly and now BB&T right. uh, looking into the future and saying, Coastal Carolina and the entire uh, Ori Georgetown community, Marion community writ large, needed someone to be able to be here on the scene, even though you're traveling oh. Around well, the state, right. yeah. Right. But, but, and, and I think it, it. I mean, what really impressed me, living in Columbia, working at, at USC, which is a fantastic institution, right. of right. course. Uh, but what really impressed me about Coastal Carolina was the the real commitment. You know, the real commitment to yeah. a vision, which is to to be an excellent provider of of, of course undergraduate and growing into right. the graduate realm right. of, of education, uh, but also to to really commit to uh, providing a lot of valuable community services. Yeah. And and I know that. You know, from my time at USC, that's what I really enjoyed doing was was getting out and working with the broader community and trying to provide some useful information for them. Right. And it was clear that that's what Coastal was looking for. Absolutely, it was a great quote of Governor Sanford's last. Uh, I right. guess it was January of 2006, 2006 right. exactly. In his State of the State address, there highlighting some of the tremendous growth our labor force growing by. 45,000 last year. I guess at that right. point it would have been 2005. Right. But to see that kind of growth and the impact, you gave a great example about folks leaving, let's say, Michigan and mm -hmm. moving down here, getting their U-Haul, their rental yeah, truck, and right. coming on down and drives home the fact that their unemployment rates then reduce and our unemployment rates would go up. But the right. long term, right. I mean, that's on the short term mm -hmm. because we'd have more people coming in and they didn't yet find jobs. Right. But on the long term picture, it's a great thing. Yeah, How did you cut? Benefit, and just yeah. break that down for viewers why that's well, so important. Yeah, and, and just as a bit of background, you, you may recall we we had a period of time. Things have, have improved over the last say half year to a year, but we had a, we went through a period of time over the last three or four years where South Carolina's unemployment rate was was real high. I mean, it, right. it was six six and a half to seven percent right. at a time when the national unemployment rate. Uh, was was dropping from right. say five and a half to about four and a half percent. So so we had this period where, um, and this was through 03, 04, 05, and 06, mm -hmm. where South Carolina's jobless rate really looked pretty ugly. 
Uh, okay. and, and you know, so I was trying to figure out what you know. Why is that? I mean, there's we have an economy that's generating jobs. Right. Uh, we have an economy that is producing pretty solid tax revenue growth and retail sales and construction right. and so on and so on. And yet we have this unemployment rate that's pretty high. So you start to dig into you know, that's sort of what economists do. We observe these mm -hmm. peculiarities try out to break there, it down and we try everyone. to get into right. that and right. say. You know, the, a lot of folks are talking about the fact that our unemployment rate is high. Let's try to figure out why that is. Right. And when I started looking at the numbers, it became pretty clear pretty quick that what was driving that unemployment rate staying high was we had tremendous labor force growth into right. South Carolina. Now, what the, what the labor force is, a bit of a primary, Simply, I guess, yeah, is, no, is sure. you know, we think of, a lot of people will think of the labor force as, as all the people that are working, but it's, it's all the people that are either working or actively looking for work. Okay. And that's right. the labor force. Sure. So if you have a job, you're in the labor force. If you don't have a job, but you're looking for one, you're in the labor force. That's fascinating. I'm okay. glad you broke that right. down. I've right. never known that. I'm sure most folks uh, wouldn't know well, that. Right. And, and that right. really becomes sort of critical to understanding what was going yeah. on at that time, because we had a lot of folks... Well, let's go back <laughs> even a little further. Uh -huh. in, in, in 2000, 2001, 2002, we had a lot of folks that lost jobs, right. in particular in manufacturing across mm -hmm. South Carolina, and certainly a lot, you know, very close to, to us here throughout the PD region. Mm -hmm. A lot of manufacturing jobs were lost, and those folks, you know, in manufacturing in rural areas, when you lose a job, when a, when a plant closes down, there's not many other opportunities. Yeah. And so those folks will, will leave the labor force. They'll give up even right. looking for work, and right. they drop out of the labor force. Things start to turn around a little bit. A few more businesses start to open. The economy starts to grow again. Jobs look like they're available again. Right. All these people rush back into the labor force to start looking for work. Mm -hmm. So you have very rapid growth in the size of the labor force. If those folks aren't finding a job right, right. away, they go from not even showing up in the statistics to showing up as being unemployed. And that keeps the unemployment rate up. Right, okay. right. Uh, more recently, the the some of that has started to slow down. The state's economy continues to create jobs at a right. pretty decent pace, and now those fo folks are finding those positions. And, oh, yeah. and our unemployment rate is, is falling now, generally speaking. Yes, yes. That is fantastic, so, Don. I'm glad you broke that down yeah. here on Thanksgiving. Yes. Just the basics there, Thanksgiving even the definition trade, yes. of low labor force. Well, that's right. Well, hey, I important mean, to I mean know. we throw these terms around all the sure. economists and, 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 of course, you know, Politicians love to pick up on, oh, yeah. on the economic data, right. so we're all throwing these terms around all the oh, time. Yeah. And, and we need to remember, we need to take the time. I've had a lot of folks, even but not not to not to uh, imply that politicians or others uh, wouldn't know what they're talking about. But I've had right. a lot of folks don't know well, that labor right. force is oftentimes even just folks searching for a job. That's very important to know. Right. And I was wondering why they didn't just change the definitions to have labor yeah. forces actually working and then the almost working is yeah, the folks right. who well, are searching you, you or a know, searching labor force. He, all these but people, they fine. need to get yeah. into, into, into Coastal or Ori Georgetown Tech and take some economics courses. And they'll learn <laughs> that's a quickly, great point. Right? Yes, yes, that's a great point. We were filming at Coastal last week and had some tremendous folks and obviously being there and to see some of the great growth out on that campus. Yeah, and, of course, exciting. Ori Georgetown Tech's right next right. door. We're here at Tech now between these two campuses is that little new theme park. Did you know that the Hard you know, Rock I, theme park was going to be here well, when you accepted you know, the job I, I in January? I had heard the rumors. Or that it was <laughs> reality, yeah. <laughs> right, right. That's going to yeah, be I a tremendous, that, tremendous uh, that, force here in the it area. Is. It's, it's yeah. amazing. I mean, it sure is fun for us with four kids yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Know, to drive by and, and see the coasters going up. Yeah. You know, they get pretty excited. And, and I think, you know, I mean, I, it has a lot of potential. It has incredible potential. I mean, we need to wait and see how it all pans out over yeah, the next year. Yeah. But it, it, it could really be a, a significant source of, of employment and right. just publicity. Sure, for the sure. Area. Folks investing $400 million to do the park and then having just purchased $50 million some to invest okay. another $300 million, that's almost three-quarters of a billion dollars yeah. right, right into ORE over the next uh, five right. years Which or so. Tremendous. That's a big deal. It's Assumably, tremendous. they've put some money aside to make sure right. they can continue to promoted to bring people that's in right. over the near term. So let's say they and may have a billion in it yeah, that's over right. time. Yeah. I haven't seen anything like that no. at O'Ree since I've been here. No, that's right. I mean, that's, I mean you, you don't see investment like that very yeah. often. Yeah. I mean, that, that yeah. does not come along very yeah. often. I mean, it's, you know, the, the occasional BMW will come right. into an area sure. and invest yeah. a lot. Uh, the occasional utility will build a new power plant right. and, and that takes a lot. Right. Uh, but, the, but this is a huge capital investment. It's a big deal. And, and, you know, the other thing is, um, you know, when, when folks are out there making that kind of capital investment, I mean, you, you know they're doing their homework. You know they're, they're putting some time into making sure that that's what they need to be doing with mm -hmm. their, their one, two, three, four hundred million dollars. Right. 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 So, so, you know, when you see something that large going in, you know there's been a lot of, you know, They've due diligence done, done yeah. already. 
And, and so that, that makes me, you know, again, optimistic that, yes. uh, that it that can work. That some other things are going to dovetail, that I-73 right. will actually become a reality, that some of the, the penny uh, sales tax, right. the roads, the Chairman Gillen with the, the mm -hmm. pennies up there on the desk, yeah, and seeing right. that coming that's in, right. thinking billions or trillions of pennies that's will right. really impact the area. And that's important right. to think about as we mm -hmm. look at the former back gate uh, of mm -hmm. the Air Force Base and the $50 million that will be invested into that and Glens Bay Road and other key roads right. in O'Ree. There's lots of road building occurring all over the area and yeah, dollars we, we, have to make that happen. That's right. We have a lot of transportation needs. We know that. Yeah. And, and it, it's, it's, uh, it's great to see that we're making right. progress. What are a couple of the biggest needs that you see for folks sitting down for Thanksgiving today, for Thanksgiving lunch, things that they could be doing? Are there any things that locals could be doing Don, to try to get ready for a, I know you're looking at it as a positive 2008, but what are things they can do to try to make sure that it becomes a positive 2008? Right, right. And, and let me say that, you know, when, when you look ahead to 2008, I mean, it, there's, there's a lot of positive signs out there. The economy, right. the, the, you know, the economy is still generating jobs. We have very low unemployment in this area. Yes. Uh, you know, Horry County's unemployment rate is about the lowest in the state. Is that right? It, it's of the 46 months counties? Months to month, yeah. it's, either, it's, it's either us or it's Lexington County. Right. Occasionally, uh, a Beaufort or York County will be in there, too. Right. Uh, but, but, right, I mean, most recently, you know, we're, we're sitting, the state average is, say, 5.7 percent or so. We're sitting at about 4.3, 4.4 percent unemployment, wow. which, which is incredibly low. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have a lot of positive factors going on out there. That, that makes me think next year is going to be a good year for the local economy. Right. Um, at the same time, I mean, that's not, I don't want to gloss over the fact that there's some negatives out there, too. Mm -hmm. we, we have a housing market, we know, locally mm -hmm. and across the country, that's, that's in real rough shape. I mean, it's, it's tough to sell a house right now. Right. Um, if, if you're, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a builder, developer, working in construction, if right. you're a realtor, Right. You're a mortgage broker. Right. You know that this is this has been a pretty rough year, right? Activity, mm -hmm. uh, home sales locally are down 30% right. from where they were last mm -hmm. year or, or more. Um, oil prices are pretty high. Gas prices are pretty high. So there's negatives out there, too. Right. And so that's why I say that, that generally speaking, there, there, there is a bit of uncertainty, certainly, mm -hmm. around, around where the economy is headed next year. I think it's going to play out right. that things are going to turn out to be pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. The economy is pretty resilient. But there are some reasons to be cautious, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's what, you know, household, down to the household level or, or individual businesses, you need to recognize that, uh, you know, I can be saying that, that I expect things to, to look pretty good in 2008. Um, but, you know, for, for certain individuals, for families that are trying to sell a house right now, mm -hmm. it does not, you know, that doesn't necessarily translate to them. It could be right. a rough time still. It could right. still take another six months or 12 months to sell that house. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, one of the themes that I always like to tell individuals is to keep in mind that, that your own situation right. okay, does not necessarily match up with what I'm saying the overall economy yeah. is doing. Yeah. You, know, so, hey, so, you don't want folks coming to see right. you at Coastal Dawn, <laughs> not Abby, that's yeah, right. Well, that's right. That's yeah. right. Um, you know, so if, if, if you're sitting there you know, trying to sell a house, right. or if you're a realtor trying to sell houses, yeah. <laughs> you know, or, or if, if you're someone that's um, you know, that, that's working, you know, a bit farther off in, in some of the rural areas right. and you're working in manufacturing, mm -hmm. you know that there's still tough times ahead and, right. and things are not going to just all of a sudden, you know, turn around and, and you know, be incredibly strong. Again. That's a great point. So, so, you know, I mean, people know their individual circumstance. Right. If you're feeling the pressure individually of what the, what the economy is doing, then start making plans. Oh, yeah. you know, hopefully, you, you can get in and, and you sort of adjust how you're budgeting money, try to mm -hmm. set more aside in savings. Um, you know, try to avoid racking up, you know, new debts and all of those kinds of things just yeah. in case on an individual level things don't go as planned. Those are great words, Don. You know, our Realtor of the Week last week in the Herald was highlighting a woman named Judy Lowe mm -hmm. was highlighting that folks are coming at O'Ree, they're checking out homes. The problem is they can't sell they their can't homes sell in other areas That's right. to be able to move in here. So folks are coming That's in, right. they're looking at homes they'd really like to buy. Mm -hmm. They may even make an effort to put out a down payment. The problem is they're having to walk away from those because they just can't sell. That's right. In other that's places, right. and that's very that's very scary. That's that's a problem for us. Right. I mean, on the one hand, it, it's a good sign. Right. That, that right. We're an attractive area. Yes. Yes. And when things turn around in Michigan and Ohio and, right. and throughout the Northeast, those folks are gonna they're gonna come. And, right. and so that's why you know long term we're gonna continue. We have a strong economy. We're gonna continue right. to grow. Folks are going to continue to come into the area. Yeah. It's the, this this period right now where, like you say, they're trying to sell a house in in Michigan where 
things are not looking nearly as good as they are in South Carolina yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The impact you want to have, Don, just the, the basics of what you want to do over your next many years mm -hmm. here at the BB&T Center, mm -hmm. the impact you want to have is just being as, break it down to the basics. What's your biggest goal over the next five years, let's say? Well, really, my, my biggest goal, first of all, is to sort of, you know, let people know locally and across South Carolina that, that Coastal Carolina has the, the resources and, and we're getting the resources in place to provide a lot of useful information, be it for, for businesses, uh, for local state government agencies or just individual households. You know, when, when, when they're looking for information, when they're looking for some work to be done related to economic conditions and economic trends, you know, we want to be, you know, the folks that, that they can come to to try to get that information. Um, one, one of the things that, that, I've, that I wanted to do when I was, you know, had the similar position at, at the, the business school at USC uh, was to really sort of ramp up, um, you know, how much information I was making available. Mm -hmm. and, and because of some constraints, I wasn't necessarily able to do everything I wanted to do. But here at Coastal, one of the things that I've already started doing that plays into that is is to come up with every month a sort of a monthly uh, right. a monthly publication, a monthly economic update, yeah. um, which is going to look at what's happening nationally, statewide, and then the the, the local economy along right. the Grand Strand. Right. You know, give some discussion of what's going on. Yeah and some numbers, what's been going on and what does it look like is going to be happening. So really I think that's the goal, is just to, to you know, continue to provide those services to the local community. Those are great goals. Keep doing what right. you're doing. Thanks for being with us this right. morning, Don, and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, you too. Enjoy the Thank turkey. You. Stay tuned to more Carolina Bee with Don Shunk coming up next. You know, it's probably going to happen in my house. It may happen to you today. You may burn your turkey. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Focus on the long term. Focus on next year and the year after. You'll get it right in the same way we need to focus on the long term here. You at home may be having a tough time, either selling a house, buying a house, otherwise. Right now, focus on the long term. Folks continue to visit South Carolina. They're making this home. It's going to be a great, if not 2008 and 2009, it's going to be a tremendous 2010. Focus on the long term. Go online, coastal.edu. Click on research. Check out the BB&T Center for Economic and Community Development or pick up the phone at 843-347-3161. Coastal Carolina University and Don Chung. Make it a difference. Happy Thanksgiving.